and using massive public subsidies to fund a majority of luxury developments is actually very disturbing. Especially when this project can and must be one as community led and community serving. Lower Manhattan remains as one of the least affordable areas in the nation. And it's clear that our community desperately needs good housing that is deeply and permanently affordable. The Five World Trade Center, which is publicly owned, is a tremendous opportunity for our government to rise to the occasion and provide fully affordable units for working families, including 9-11 survivors and their descendants. In fulfilling that mission, the 100% Affordable 5 WTC Coalition has engaged architects, community leaders, and local experts to consider what an affordable tower would look like and the feasibility of constructing a fully affordable tower. I am especially thankful to Professor Delane, who has recently, recently, uh, recently released studies showed, showing that it is actually entirely feasible for a fully affordable development to be built on the site. And this coalition is ready to do everything it takes to set a standard for affordable housing. And I am proud to be here to fight with you. And it is time for ESD to step up to the plate and to join us in making our community needs the chief priority of this project. I am proud. I am proud to have been with 100% Affordable Five World Trade Center Coalition since the beginning. And I will continue to stand with you until we get the project that our community fully deserves. Right now, we have a huge transition, and we are going to make it with all of our community voices in mind. And we have to make sure that we are fully funding our 9-11 housing, and that we are actually putting the survivors at the forefront. We came to rebuild our community, and the folks here deserve for our community to care about you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, I am honored to introduce Assembly Member Deborah Glenn. Thank you very much. Um, while this is outside of my district, it was not when uh, years ago. So I have um, deep roots uh, tied to many of the people here. And um, Eileen is 100% correct that this is an extremely pricey place to live. And when we have government resources that are being used, it is vital that 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 resources go to affordable housing, 100% affordable housing at High World Trade Center. We always hear that we can't, land is so expensive, that we can't manage to get more than a pittance out of luxury developments that are authorized by the government because it is so expensive to build and it's so expensive because the land costs so much. But when it is government land, then you have to say, what is the excuse? What the, and the answer is, there is no excuse. There's no excuse. And I think that Eileen was right in pointing out that we are uh, remembering and for many people reliving uh, the horror of the attack on the Trade Center, uh, which was an attack both on the Pentagon and uh, people died saving uh, either the Capitol or the White House uh, when the, when the uh, plane went down in Shanksville, Pennsylvania. But we are committed and people were committed to coming back or returning to revitalize this area in a way that is incredibly vibrant and very crucial to our economy. And the payback should be making certain that people can live here 
And that means 100% affordable housing at five World Trade Centers. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So we're really, really happy to have with us today Dan Goldman, who is the candidate for New York 10 Congressional District, and that is the district that this site falls within. So, Dan. Avoiding those lantern flies. Thank you very much, Jill. Uh, thank everybody for being here today. Thanks for the coalition's leadership on this issue. We are facing an affordability affordability crisis in our city, and we are also facing a housing crisis in our city. And those two factors in combination have brought us here today in support of a new building on the site of Ground Zero that must be 100% affordable. Two days ago, we marked the 21st anniversary of 9-11, and we spoke about how we, we must never forget what happened that day. And I will certainly never forget what happened that day, as I watched the second plane hit the towers from my apartment just a few blocks north of here. The image of soot-covered people walking up Hudson Street for hours and hours that day is permanently ingrained in my memory. And I remember vividly smelling the smoldering remains of the towers for weeks right here on Ground Zero. As this area has been redeveloped over the last two decades, real estate developers have made tons of money while many of the 9-11 survivors are being forced to move out of this area because of a lack of affordability. And it is for that reason that I stand here with all of you in support of a new affordable housing development on this site with priority given to 9-11 survivors. We must reimagine the way that redevelopment is done in this city. Developers on this site have received significant government subsidies and funding to help them redevelop this site and make a lot of money. They've also provided much needed green space, they've provided commercial space, they've provided retail space, all of which is very important. But the last aspect that needs to be included in any redevelopment in this city is more community input, more community service, and more affordable housing. And the developers must pitch in for the public good to help the community and to foster the diversity and affordability that our city so desperately needs. The state should not have to bear the full cost to make this fully affordable. And the partnership between the World Trade Center developers and our government must include the developers paying their fair share to provide this affordable housing. That's right. yeah. I want to thank all the members and leaders of the coalition for leading the community in this critical fight and the work that these public servants and politically engaged citizens have done to draw attention to this issue is so important and so inspiring. And none of this discussion would be possible without you. Thank you again. Thank you. Thank you, Dan Wolf. Our next congressman from New York Tech. Yes. And I see our next assembly member from AD65, <laughs> Grace Lee. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you everyone for being here today. I just want to stand here um, in solidarity with all this amazing community that's been fighting for 100% affordability at Five World Trade. Uh, like Dan mentioned, you know, we, two days ago we celebrated 9-11, and I brought my daughter, who's 10 years old, to services because I wanted her to remember, and I wanted to pass on the memory of what happened on 9-11 to her and to the next generation. And what better tribute could we provide to the next generation than to build 100% affordable housing on Five World Trade Center for this yes. community? Five World Trade Center is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to create affordable housing opportunities, and specifically to September 11th survivors and their families, first responders, and seniors. 
The people who stayed in Lower Manhattan after the towers fell rebuilt the city, even as they developed cancer and other serious diseases, and now they are being priced out of their homes. I have heard some people argue it would be more efficient to build affordable housing elsewhere. It doesn't have to be either or, it can be both and. Yes, both and. There is no substitute for the symbolic value of making Five World Trade Center 100% affordable. The community members who rebuilt this neighborhood and the first responders who stepped up when our city needed their help the most deserve more than a place where they can no longer afford to live. They saved this neighborhood and deserve to stay in it, and what could be a greater living tribute to them than a place that they can all call home? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Grace. So um, I understand our council member, uh, Chris Marte, is on his way, but we also have some extraordinary community leaders who come to, out today to show their support. Uh, Richard Corman, who is the president of Downtown Independent Democrats. Would you like to thank your work? So, hello everybody. Thank you all for, for coming and I really want to thank our elected officials and soon to be elected officials for their ongoing, their continuing support right from the beginning and really through what we think is going to be the success of our efforts, which is 100% affordable housing here on Five World Trade Center. So, uh, I thank you on behalf of the Coalition for 100% Affordable Housing for being here and for your support. You've heard from them and you've heard from Jill, and you've heard from so many, not just today, but over the course of nearly these last two years about this issue, about the thousands of affordable apartments that have been lost in this community, the thousands that used to, people used to live here that no longer can afford to live here, about how the people who worked to save and preserve this neighborhood, who worked through multiple uh, the, the terror attacks and multiple disasters to rebuild this neighborhood, how they can no longer afford to live here. About the incredible importance of the need to bring diversity, both economic and racial diversity, into this community that is increasingly white and wealthy. This is not right. This is not right. And about how this is the very last opportunity, the very last major public space in Lower Manhattan where we can actually accomplish these goals. This is the place where we can do it. But this is, we know this is not easy. This has been a long road and, this, and we're not done yet. So we, uh, we need your continuing support. We thank everyone here who's been here and all of our elected officials for their commitment to this because it's not done yet. So we also really do have to appreciate the fact that the... Uh -uh. I'm holding the fort until our council member arrives. Oh, okay. Uh, I, so I just want to say that um, we appreciate all that support. We also appreciate what our what LMDC, ESDC, and the Port Authority have been doing. They've at least been in conversation with us. That conversation is ongoing, but we do have a long way to go. So thank you for your support. Thank you, thank you, Richard. Richard is an original member of the coalition. Speaking of original members, I am very, very proud to introduce. <laughs> Our district leader, Victoria Mariello, one of the founders of the coalition. Thank you so much, Jill. So I am Victoria Mariello. I'm the district leader here in Lower Manhattan. I've lived here for nearly 25 years. Um, and I am a member of the Coalition for 100% Affordable Five World Trade Center, an extraordinary group of people who have when we first talked about 100% affordability at Five World Trade Center, we actually had people laugh at us. They thought we were nuts. We said, no, we're not nuts. We're right. Because yeah, we deserve to have affordability downtown. We've been really, really fortunate, as, as uh, many have said, our elected officials who have stood behind us and who are here, many who are here today, those who have, couldn't be and sent representatives, we're very grateful for that. But this is the last opportunity at the World Trade Center site to actually 
give back to those who were here, who helped rebuild, the survivors, their children, our, our first responders, everyone who made this place possible. And this is public land. So I know there's a sign here somewhere that says public land for public good. Thank you, Meg. And that's what this is. This is public land and this is a public good. 100% affordability. We can do this. We commissioned a study that shows that we can do this. And we're grateful that the agencies came to meet with us to speak with us. One thing though that is disturbing to me is they tell me they're on a timeline. This is a self-imposed bureaucratic timeline. And when you tell me that, you're saying your due dates are more important than building the affordable housing that we so desperately need downtown. So we're asking that you please stay with us at the table. Don't move forward with a plan that's going to bring 900 luxury apartments down here. We don't need them. We don't need them. So I'm going to ask all of you to log on on Thursday, to sign up, to testify on Thursday, as uh, Jill said, five to eight. Um, website is actually the new NYC, right? ESD.gov. But you'll see, just actually follow Affordable Tower on Twitter, and we'll give you all the information. We'll make sure you guys can do this. But that's what's going to take, because we need, we, we know we can do this financially, what we need is a political will. And to make that happen is we need you to make your voices heard. So thank you all so much. Thanks so much for being here. We can do this. Thank you, Victoria. We have the support. One of the wonderful things about this coalition and, and this project is the support of other organizations and coalitions and neighbors. And I'm very proud to introduce Michael Kramer of the Seaport Coalition, to say a few words. Thank you. So I want to do a little history here. Um, I don't know how many of you know that the World Trade Center was supposed to be down by the South Street Seaport originally, and that the governor of New Jersey decided they wanted it here because of the PATH trade. So what happened was the, the Rockefellers, David and Nelson Rockefeller, were so influential in the late 1950s and early 1960s that they declared this area to be blighted and they took it over through eminent domain. And by doing that, they destroyed the Radio Row District that was 45 years in this area, from 1921, since radio was invented, where they sold about 20% of all radios in the entire United States right here. All these small businesses were, were beaten down. The Port Authority offered them something like $3,000 to just get out of there one day and bulldozers came. And suddenly, this area was being primed for the two Twin Towers. And I don't know if everybody knows the nicknames of the Twin Towers. They were David and Rocky. Yeah. Those were the original nicknames of the Twin Towers. And if you also remember, the Twin Towers basically were empty for the first 10 years. And the only thing that filled them up were New York State offices, because Nelson was the governor and he put all the state workers in their offices here. So what I'm trying to say is that this land was taken for ostensibly what was called a public purpose, and that's the only reason you can do eminent domain and condemn the land. And what was that public purpose? That public purpose was to build two office towers. And who, who was in charge of that public purpose? The Port Authority. The Port Authority is supposed to be in charge of transportation. Why is the Port Authority in the real estate business? Okay, and then once you get the Port Authority involved, you've got two, two governors involved, you have boards involved, you have all this secret deal-making that goes on, and there have been about 15 years of secret deal-making here at the World Trade Center, trying to figure out where, which building should go where, how to get the church, Greek church back, where to put the memorial. And unfortunately, Five World Trade Center is part of that deal making. And the Port Authority has insisted that they want their share of revenue because they want to finance, I guess, the George Washington Bridge or one of the tunnels or something like that. Nothing to do with housing. They shouldn't be in the real estate business. They shouldn't be making a profit. This is public land. 
It should be 100% affordable. Yeah. All right, thank you, thank you. I am also honored that we have Esther Nicholson here, someone who I've known for quite some time. Um, and Esther's going to speak with you uh, a little bit about Washington Street uh, Neighbors Coalition. Hi there, I'm going to echo a little bit what Mr. Kramer said. I've lived in this neighborhood since 1983, two blocks away. And this neighborhood has been destroyed by four waves of destruction. The eminent domain that happened for the Battery Tunnel, the eminent domain that happened for the Trade Center, then 9-11, and now building indiscriminately with only profit in mind. And I call these ugly buildings weeds, by the way, because that's indeed what they are. So basically, what the government owes us is what they took away from a blue-collar, immigrant, diverse neighborhood that was here before the Trade Center was built. They owe us that. They owe us 100% affordability, and they owe us housing that we can afford. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Esther. Uh, we're going to have a few more speakers, and we're waiting for interest to come. I think right now, before we introduce our next speaker, we should just let the world know, why are we here? What do we want? Where do we want it? never stopping. You know, other groups were here, oh, we already designed the plan, we already have funding for it, we already have the hearings done. But this coalition has never taken that as a pause. They continue to organize, they even continue to create their own alternative. Every time we deal with the city and the state in every project, they say, well, give us an alternative. This coalition got together, gave a really good alternative, that's hard to say no to. And so we're going to make sure that this Thursday when we testify, we are unified and say, you must choose our alternative. You must choose to make this site 100% affordable. Administrations rezone all neighborhoods on the basis of we have to build affordable housing in white, rich neighborhoods. We spent the past four years fighting over Soho and Noho just for that false promise, that false narrative. But the city won't do it on a public site. The state won't do it on a public site where we know the money can be there, where it can actually work. It really tells you who the city is actually working for. And in this case, it's Silver State Properties and not the community. Not residents that want to continue to live here, not 9-11 survivors who want to move back here, and their family members that want to use the schools and the accessories that this, uh, uh, you know, uh, all the things that Laura Manhattan can give a family. And so we're here today with our future assembly member, with uh, assembly member Yuli Niu, and a lot of community advocates saying this is what we want, and we better get it. Thank you. Thank you, that one thing um, Just a reminder, Thursday, anytime between 5 and 8 p.m., but go and register now. Register early. ESD.gov, and you'll see five World Trade Center hearing. Please register to sign speak. Sign our petition, too. And sign our petition. Or email. Okay. All right. One, one, I think one last speaker. And that is one of our original members, Justine. Thank you. 
Thank you so much. Sorry. Um, so anyway, I'm not going to repeat what everybody else has said because what do we want? 100% affordability. Where do we want it? What do we want? Where do we want it? And who do we want it for? Okay, that's what I want to focus on. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you. I want to make it clear that um, this is for a preference to 9-11 survivors. As a two-time 9-11 cancer survivor, I am standing here before you strong and determined to stand up for the people who are behind me, who believed our government when they said the air was safe to breathe, come home, rebuild Lower Manhattan. I am standing here representing the Port Authority police officers that are here protecting us and protecting our sites. Because what we are doing here is looking for housing for you, for your families if you want it, for people who were first responders who gave their lives, for people who are first responders today, and survivors, because people should be able to live in the neighborhoods where they work. They should be able to go to school. Teachers should be able to live in the neighborhoods where they work. And that is the message that is lost with the Port Authority and EDC. And Five World Trade Center is a perfect opportunity to make new ground. It is, just, it is a perfect opportunity on public land to take public property and public funds, and I'm calling upon all our elected officials to make this happen, because at the end of the day, this should be the model for New York. We would get economic integration, we would get racial integration, and we would make New York City, our city, stronger and better. And now, thank you so much for listening to me. I am really honored to introduce our New York State Senator, who has been, who is chair of the State Senate Housing Committee, and has been an integral part in our discussions as a coalition with the state agencies. Without his help and his guidance, we probably would not be here today. I cannot thank him enough for that help, and it's an honor for me to introduce our state senator, Senator Kavanaugh. Thank you. Uh, I'll, I'll be brief. I'm sorry I'm late. There's a lot going on today, but I had a couple other meetings to be at, but I didn't want to miss this opportunity. Uh, first of all, to just thank everyone who has brought attention to the critical opportunity here to provide affordable housing in this community that where there are very few such opportunities. Very limited space, a very expensive here. Um, and also, this is a community that has lost a great deal of affordable housing over a very long period. During the period when deregulation or in our rent regulation system was in, still in place, this is the community that lost the most rent regulated units of any in the city. Um, so we, so we, de, you know, we dereg, we repealed the deregulation provisions along with many other reforms in the Housing Stability and Tenant Protection Act in 2019 to preserve what we've got. We've got a million apartments around the state, around the city that are subject to those very strong protections. But unfortunately, very few of them remain here because of that long-term process. Um, I, I just wanted to be able to say that I continue to work with this coalition, with all of the state agencies. Uh, we've been having regular little meetings, including the offices of uh, Congress member Jerry Nadler and Assembly member New and uh, Chris Marte and uh, Mark Levine, our borough president and the community board, all have taken an active role in this. Uh, and we'll continue to work as we do everything we can to maximize the affordability of the site. Thank you so much. All right, thank you so much, Senator. I thank everyone for coming. It's amazing people. Please, please, esd.gov. Register Thursday. It's a Zoom meeting. You can make your comments via Zoom or you can submit written comments. It's the single most important thing that we can do right now. So one last time, as soon as the dump truck passes and the fire truck. What do we want? Where do we want it? Where do we want it? Five World Trade! How much do we want? 100%. 100%. How much? 100%. 100%.